people that exploit and abuse children, I really feel like are, are monsters. Once the boy in the green shirt was identified and his offender arrested, that set into motion probably the last two and a half years of our life for the whole office here. What we started off with was one offender abusing one boy that we were trying to identify. And what we ended up with was a large group of offenders that were abusing many boys all over the world. Offenders often like to, to brag about or share with other like-minded offenders their exploits and things that they've, that they've done. And we find this, and it's part of our training, not just to law enforcement, but to anybody who's investigating these types of cases. Once an arrest is made, once law enforcement has access to, you know, the fruits of the crime, computers and laptops and, and, and cell phones, the work's just beginning. It might take a year to get to that point, but the work is just beginning then. Now we're going to have full access to a lot of content that needs to be analyzed and, and, and examined. So a lot of the training that we do with law enforcement, it's not just on the investigative side, but it's on the digital forensic side. The boy in the green shirt is, uh, last I, I saw was doing very well, was out of that environment, uh, is still in contact and working with, with aftercare, uh, and is doing, is, is doing very well. I enjoy being able to identify people that are bad, that don't appear to be bad. If you're working drug cases or other types of cases, sometimes it's really easy to look at somebody and determine this person has a drug addiction, this person's a danger to me. Uh, on the terrorism side, it's, it's the same. But offenders, people that exploit and abuse children, I really feel like are, are monsters. These are people that when you see them, when you initially look at them, appear to be very friendly, very safe, very successful people. And that scares me more than anything. <laughs>